What's going on everyone? My name is Sherwin and today we are in front of the R1T Studios. Uh, in this video, I wanted to share with you guys a product or an adapter that I've purchased. This is not a sponsored video. I wish it was, uh, but I bought these with my own money. Um, but a product adapter from e, E2Z, EV. And what it is, is it's an adapter to use my Tesla wall connector, my home charger to a CCS or J1772 vehicle, which the Rivian is at the moment. Uh, I needed this because there's no way for me to charge the Rivian at home because silly me, when I first got my EVs, I went with Tesla and why would I get any other brand? There's no other brand that can even come close to what Tesla does. Silly me, right? <laughs> and so that's why I ended up uh, just installing the Tesla uh, home charger with the uh, J3400 or the NACS uh, port, uh, which is exclusive at that time uh, for Tesla. And so now I'm in this predicament that I have a Rivian with J1772 slash CCS uh, port, I cannot charge at home. Well, I found a company, A to Z, and they uh, have these adapters. So the first adapter I'm gonna show you is the um, Tesla Nax J3400 to J1772 adapter. And what you get is this. It's, it's pretty heavy and, and well built. Uh, it does come with the key. Um, that way you could lock this latch and keep it uh, locked in there. Uh, I guess for destination chargers when you're not at the house, but at the house this is probably not necessary. At least for me because I charge inside the garage. Um, but yeah, and then there's also a locking mechanism uh, under here where you slide it towards the cable and you can't pull it out. You can't pull it out. So on this side is the Tesla Nax uh, side, and on this side is the J1772 side. So this for sure I needed, and now they have this other product. It's the um, Tesla Nax J3400 to C CCS1 adapter. Uh, these are for superchargers because now not only Ford, but Rivian can utilize the uh, Tesla supercharging network and probably more into the future, other uh, brands, other car companies will be able to use it. But similar to the other adapter, there is a locking mechanism here, no lock on the latch. Uh, but yeah, you slide, you slide the lock towards the cable and it'll lock in place and it'll stay in there. And this side is the Tesla side. And this side is the Rivian or Ford or other car company side. This is the CCS1 side. All right, so what we have here are three adapters. These are the, the two from A to Z EV. And this is what Tesla gives you. Now this is the opposite. This is the um, J1772 to Tesla. So if you were uh, needing to charge from let's say charge point that has a J1772 plug, you're gonna need this adapter which comes with most Teslas nowadays. Um, but this is the opposite. So the J1772 is actually part of the CCS connector. Um, you could see right here, it's this top part where there's a, two extra prongs here to make it CCS. So these are the two adapters side by side. They're, they're pretty chunky and heavy. Uh, seems to be built with uh, good quality too. All right, so we are here uh, in front of the Rivian where the charge port is. There's three lines here that I um, just pretty much hover over and it opens up. Um, so this is the charge port. Um, this part is the J1772. And if you flip this flap, flip the flap, <laughs> open um, you will reveal the the bottom two prongs which this entire thing here is the ccs1 charging port okay so what i have at home is the v3 with the wi-fi connectivity and very long cables i think it's either 18 or 24 feet long uh, which allows me to 
run the cable all the way to the front uh, onto the driveway and that's where my truck is. So I actually got two of these um, right here. And this one right here is actually the, um, the first one that they sent to me and I had an issue with it. Um, basically what happened was uh, when you put these in, it, it, it's hard to, it's hard to unlatch. It's hard to unlatch. So I had to contact them. And by the way, let, let me just say that A to Z customer service. Oh my goodness. It is fantastic. It's just amazing. It's, it's like what companies used to be like in the nineties and early 2000, because I don't know what happened to customer service nowadays with these companies, but this is a Canadian company and maybe that's the reason why they're extra nice, but they're very nice and very helpful. Um, but yeah, I was telling them like, Hey, I can't, I can't get this thing loose. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty tight in there. And so they actually filmed and recorded a video that, um, uh, showed me how to, uh, remove this. So, so as promised, this is the video to show you how to remove the adapter when it's stuck. Um, this is the other one that we found that was faulty in our inventory, thanks to you. So as you can see, when it's plugged, even when in the unlock position right here, um, it's hard to remove. So you're going to, because of the safety locking mechanism in the bottom, you're going to drag it towards the ground like this, point it to the ground, and you're going to take one hand on the adapter, the other hand on the connector. And you're going to simply remove it like this. There's a, a, a technique, I guess, or a way, but basically you hold it down this way and make sure that the lock is facing towards the, the car or the tip of the charger and you just pull down. <laughs> there. <laughs> So I, I gave them a call and um, they actually checked the batch. They have batch numbers in there. These are all like um, track. So they checked the batch and everything and they came back and told me that, you know what? Uh, there was one other adapter in the same batch that was having similar issues. And what they did was they sent out another adapter free of charge and um, that's it. So now this new adapter that they sent it's in there easy easy to take off so man thank you very much a2z customer service my goodness all right so we are going to charge the rivian using the tesla home charging wall connector um, just make sure you have this slid in towards the uh, charging cable and um, you're gonna see the word open so its current state is not open. It's actually telling you that this direction is to open it or unlock it, but it's locked in place. Um, this locking mechanism is actually more important on the um, CCS, the CCS uh, charger. You, uh, this is more important. This actually will not work um, if you don't have it locked in. Uh, that's one of the things that you have to do because once it's locked, it, it connects the the supercharger cable to this adapter and makes everything work uh, as as uh, safe as as it can be um, but if you unlock this it actually i believe it it shuts off the uh the current and it'll stop charging so don't don't unlock it while you are charging it'll disrupt it um, and it's it may be unsafe to do so so always uh just lock it it's good practice to lock it so um, all we're gonna have to do is just plug this bad boy in this way. Um, so currently uh, it's not on automatic. So you have to, um, in the Tesla app, I swipe to my home charger and it says non-Tesla vehicle. I'm on uh, the scheduled uh, time of use. So between 9 p.m. and 8 a.m. is the lowest uh, rate, but 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. is um, the second lowest rate, not, not the peak rate. My peak rate's at between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. So, um, but yeah, uh, all we have to do is hit start charging and it's going to charge. 
So you're gonna see now that the front is uh, lit green because it's an indicator that it is charging. So right now the max that it's uh, using is 11.4 kilowatt hours. And on the Rivian app, it's telling me 10.9 uh, kilowatt. And it is charging right now. We're currently at 29% state of charge. I have it uh, set to the limit of 55%. And it's going to take three hours and 21 minutes. The, this is a larger battery than the Model X. So keep that in mind. So what I'm going to show you is a couple of settings I had to change in the Tesla wall connector uh, part of the Tesla app. Uh, the first thing you need to do is go under charge or I'm sorry, uh, settings. And under here, there's several things that we have to go and check out. So the first uh, option is this vehicle charging. Uh, this is where you can set the schedule to where um, if you have a high rate, you don't want it to charge during that time. So you could plug it in, but it won't charge during those times or only allow to charge during these times. So right now I have it to allow charging at 9 p.m. but stop charging by 8 a.m. Um, so when I get home, I plug it in and just leave it and when 9 p.m. hits it automatically charges it uh, the next thing we need to look at is this access control so by default this is actually uh, any Tesla vehicle I believe is where it was set at um, so I had to change it to any electric vehicle because we are charging a Rivian and then the other thing too is uh, this slider on this page, you can enable or disable the scheduling ske schedule, <laughs> scheduling schedule. Uh, that's, that's really about it. I mean, there is this utility rate plan if you wanna put that in there, but um, it's, it's not really that uh, important. Um, but it does, I think that allows it to, to um, uh, keep track of your, your rates and costs. So what do I think about the adapter? I think the adapters are great. It's built really well. It's heavy um, and it seems of good quality. Now I bought the combo for uh, the home charging and also for supercharging. Now Rivian will be sending out the uh, supercharger to CCS1 adapter for free, free of charge. But my VIN is like up there. I just picked up the truck like probably almost two months ago. And I'm, I'm pretty much at the bottom of the list. I don't know when I'm gonna get that uh, adapter. So I figured I'll get the combo adapter that comes with the home adapter and the supercharging adapter um, because like there's like a bundled price. Now I, do, I did get uh, a coupon code from a friend on Twitter uh, Chris Hilby, he's uh, part of the Rivian community, uh, but there's plenty of like affiliate uh, code coupons. So just reach out um, to Chris or uh, I think Rivian Tracker may even have one. Um, I'll put a couple of accounts on Twitter or X that you can uh, send them a message. And I'll, I'll also share the coupon code that I used. I don't know if it still works, but I believe it took 15% off. So it was even more of an incentive to also get the supercharger adapter um, instead of waiting for the Rivian one. Now, I think this took about four to six weeks from time of uh, purchase to deliveries because a lot of people are buying these adapters, even though uh, Rivian is sending out the adapter for free. Um, it does take some time. I haven't taken it on a road trip where I could have used the adapter. I could have done it in the last Vegas trip, but uh, the agreement with Abby was we need to alternate the cars. Uh, for road trips and so I took the Rivian to Carlsbad in the previous road trip and then the next trip was the Vegas one so it was the Model X's turn um, so I didn't get a chance to do it now I could use it uh, during my work commute um, but I also alternate between the Model Y and the uh, R1T and it's a little bit more difficult to use this adapter like in the urban areas because superchargers in urban areas are a lot more uh, busier. And the two that I've checked out so far on my way to my work commute, um, it's not meant for non-Tesla vehicles yet. Just the positioning of the, the charging cabinets and stuff is just, 
it's not positioned um, or optimized for non-Tesla vehicles. I will really be inconveniencing uh, people by taking up two slots. If, it was, if it's even possible, because again, the urban supercharging locations that uh, I have along my routes uh, tend to be very busy. Um, on top of that, the other thing to consider if you are gonna be using this adapter is uh, Tesla has a subscription fee. You don't have to get it, but if you don't get it, um, your charging rate is actually higher than what its current rate is. Um, so it could be as much as like 62 cents, 67 cents, 71 cents, depending on time, depending on location. And so there isn't really an advantage then um, if you could just charge with Electrify America or EVgo because the rates are pretty much similar uh, at, at those rates. The only advantage is location. If it is an advantage, um, but if that location is busy, I mean, again, you're right back to public, public charging. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, it is $12.99 a month. And what it does is it brings down the rates to match Tesla owners rates. And someone had posted somewhere that one full charge uh, on a Rivian battery, uh, and that's when you should start seeing the savings um, to offset the subscription cost because these batteries are about 122 uh, kilowatts. And so if you're saving about 10 cents per kilowatt, that pretty much equates to that $13 per month. So you just need one full charge per month and you should be able to offset the subscription fee. And beyond that, till the following month, uh, you, you're gonna be saving the, the, the price difference. Uh, so let me know what you think. Uh, I mean, if you have a non-Tesla, would you buy this adapter? Would you wait for what Rivian's gonna send out, what Ford is gonna send out? Because they are sending them out already. Uh, would you wait for it or uh, pick pick an adapter up? I mean, for me, I needed the home adapter for sure because uh, we've only had Teslas until this point. Now we have a Rivian, so it is definitely needed. I didn't want to have to rewire. I didn't want to have to uh, install another one like a NEMA uh, 1450. I checked with my electrician. Uh, he was going to charge me 600 bucks to add it. Um, I think my panel could still handle it. We have a 200 amp panel. And then I also checked my other guy and he wanted $900. And so the adapter itself is, I think, like 200 or something. But I'll, I'll put the links in the description below if you want to go and check those out. Again, this is not a sponsored video, but I wanted to share with you um, the adapters that I'm using. Um, I just haven't tried it on superchargers yet because I just haven't had the opportunity to. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please like. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.